Welcome to the bold analysis, ladies and gentlemen. Something is happening, and I think President William Ruto is blackmailing Kimani Chungwa, but in a very um, layman's language, I want to say that Dr. William Samuel Ruto is actually playing with fire. There is a report that I have seen, it's almost now trending in Twitter, that challenging MPs from Nandi and Bomet, majority of which are first-time MPs, have formed a Kakunji, a Kamkunji, and it's a, in a WhatsApp group that seems to have been leaked out, that they have merged by a host of other MPs from, by a cohort from Mount Kenya, majority of which are from Nyeri and Kiambu, to hatch a plan to remove Kimani Chungwa as the majority leader of the National Assembly. That report is circulating in Twitter for some time. And I am saying that it is it might be too much premature to even to see that as a possibility. But do you know that most of these uh, MPs that are protesting are first-time MPs in the National Assembly? And they seem to be representing a voice and their grounds is that Kimani Chungwa is very arrogant, is dismissive of them, and is not addressing their issues. And it seems like the first-time MPs are feeling like the new majority leader is not accommodating them. This is a recipe for chaos because Kimani Chungwa was part of the package that or part of the bargaining package that William Ruto gave the Kiambu County in his government. Kindly subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, and also like our video. Thank you very much, guys. Um, for those who've been supporting this channel, for those who are supporting even through the MPESA, and other, even those who share the video as Antin San, I'm still opening um, this space and uh, receiving uh, maybe advertisement deals that can come through so that we grow the channel. As you do the analysis, you can put on your product here, and with that, uh, you get some visibility. I am saying that 133 MPs that are in the 13th parliament, their voices should be heard. And William Ruto should not entertain such kind of, um, um, uh, of petitions. But someone also say that do you think that he's trying just to checkmate the, he's trying to checkmate Kimani Chungwa, the Kikuyu member of parliament. Let's just try to track what happened before that. But I, you also need to listen to that clip here. The first time MPs have trained their guns on majority leader Kimani Chungwa over his leadership style. The new MPs from the Rift Valley, specifically Bomet and Nandi counties, and another section from the Mount Kenya region, Allege Ishungwa is high-handed and arrogant. So that was a, 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 that is a snippet of a story that was done by TV47, and it's a full story. It, it's just a real bit of what is happening. As of yesterday, before Kenya Kwanzaa PG was called, or William Ruto gave um, Kimani Chungwa responsibility to create the clustering on how Kenya Kwanzaa is going to divide the five slots, five airless slots that they have after the last general election. So that clustering, it was not a decision by Kimani Chunga. It's not a Kimani Chunga who chose. But of course, I understand that a higher organ of UDA party and State House team crafted those things and came up with a strategy on how they were going to share the slots. So Kimani Chunga was just a messenger. And before that PG was called, 
The members of parliament, especially those who feel aggrieved from Mount Kenya and those Bomet and Nandi counties, also had a feeling that by the time um, the, the clustering was done, they, 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 they tried to, uh, to push Kimani Chunga, that Kimani Chunga might have sidelined other people without knowing that that decision was not made by Kimani Chunga. That decision was made by William Ruto himself, not even including the other people. So um, after that, the decision, the PG was called, and when they were going to State House, they were not told that there was going to be secret balloting. <laughs> but what I understand is maybe some of the candidates that won had been told to lobby, or even William Ruto lobbied himself, calling MPs each and telling them that, look here, you need to make sure that so-and-so gets these positions. Or even communication was done internally through some WhatsApp group or something. And some of these MPs were never part of it. So when people went to State House, there was shock that, okay, ballots are ready, we are going to cast the vote. So that's what happened. And after that, there seems to be complaints that Imani Chungwa bulldozed or rather mismanaged the process. But that is just true position of what happened before yesterday. But in my considered opinion, I am saying that William Ruto is opening or rather is, is, is bringing in this, this Kimani Chungwa majority leader a removal can actually blow out, can rupture in different forms and it's going to take different forms. It's going to be a battlefront for Azimio and UDA. But just before that, huh, there is something that I can see. Mount Kenya equation coming into play. And when this comes up, I see Gashagwa supremacy at play. Regina Gashagwa is the second in command, the deputy president, um, that of course people have blamed uh, we we analysts, not even people, even the analysts have spoken um, outrightly about conduct and um, what he has, was calling his hottest speeches. Eh? He's becoming one of the hottest leaders in the country. But William Ruto made sure that he brought Moses Kuria and Kemani Chungo into the cabinet just to checkmate. Kemani Chungo was brought into the majority leader assembly, then Moses Kuria given some cabinet slot to checkmate Regede Gashagwa. And one of the people that are threat to Regede Gashagwa is actually the camp, the camp Kiambu. That camp Kiambu includes Kimani Chungwa, Kimani Wamatangi, and Moses Kuria, in my considered opinion. Those are things that are the most senior members, those who are in government. So what we are seeing here is, when this conversation comes to play, even Kimani, even Gashagwa can backstab William Ruto and successfully used, used that conversation to suppress Kimani Ichungwa. On suppressing Kimani Ichungwa, or rather kicking out Kimani Ichungwa, will be something that will work to the supremacy battle between Ichungwa, Gashagwa, and Moses Kuria. But even internally in Kiambu, Moses Kuria and Kimani Ichungwa are looking for the throne within Kiambu County. So that aspect first neutralizes um, that kind of uh, war that can emerge between the two of them. Remember, there are reports that Kimani Chungwa and Dede Nyoro never wanted Moses Kuria to be appointed to the cabinet. And in one of the citizen dailies, I think they were reporting that they were behind the scene uh, lobby by people who had uh, funded or rather supported William Ruto at the campaign to make sure to pick Moses Kuria for that position. So there is a lot of it that comes into play. But how this can, the other form it can take is successfully even William Ruto's detract, detractors and distractors would come with a Ruto betrayal narrative and that can neutralize his gamer grip. Gamer grip can be stake by a Ruto narrative, uh, a Ruto betrayal narrative. I can tell you this. 
in the next in the 2027 general election a narrative that will tilt the scales either in favor or out of favor of William Ruto is a game of betrayal and if someone successfully can run that narrative that Ruto is betraying Gema or I betrayed Gema, betrayed Mount Kenya, that successfully can make William Ruto become a first time MP. If you remove Gema from William Ruto, you will remain with a challenging kingpin. Ruto is a president because of the Gema group. So this kind of um, this kind can also come out and people like Chungwa will successfully use by because it is the betrayal that was the platform of campaign for Kenya Kwanzaa when they made mass exodus from Jubilee to UDA. Their language was about Uhuru Kenyatta betrayal. So that betrayal aspect can also come to play. But I also want to throw it back on um, on this um, Kalenjin and Peace Bumet and Nandi. Internally, there are things that I imagine. For, for example, in Bumet, Wilson Sonsion uh, was supposed to be was pushing for a island of nation. He didn't come close to that. Uh, maybe you get a CAS, we are not yet still sure. But there was a there is a perception that Nandi, not even Nandi, the counter representation in William Ruto's cabinet is not balanced, especially on the Kalenji way. I don't know who is a CS from um, from Bumet, but I know someone from PSC, Kujuis Korea was nominated. Now there could be forces within the Kalenjin that feel that they have been pushed away from the office of the president, William Someroto. Now, these forces can successfully coalesce just to destabilize William Ruto a bit. From whom? Well then. Because how would you see MPs from Bumet and Nandi crafting that? But I'm also tempted to feel that William Ruto himself could still bring this war a bit. One, to checkmate Geshagwa, uh, to checkmate Ichungwa. Maybe he has realized that Ichungwa is not conforming with his ideas. Or secondly, it will be used to test, uh, to create an um, a common uh, conversation, and that can hold Kenya Kwanzaa together. You know, sometimes when these divisions emerge, then you come, you bring people together and solve it, you, you hold the coalition together. I don't know what to think about this. I know it can be hot air, but it normally starts like this. It's too early. To, we are like, three, like, I think, two months into Kenya Kwanzaa government. If this starts today, I can tell you, signals... The kind of signals that this is sending is that there is a likelihood of breakaway within the UDA, either from the cabinet or from the parliament. Or even if not from the parliament, then from the party. Those three camps are very uh, important for William Ruto. And of course, we'll try to look those camps. So this kind of breakaway, these are the signals that UDA can break. Sweet signals that UDA can actually break into pieces if William Ruto is not careful. So thank you guys. That's my bold look into it. We are still following ELA elections in the parliament. And of course, we'll come back here with full analysis on what exactly is happening or maybe the outcome of that process. So far, Winnie Odinga, Kennedy, Hassan Omar, Shaba, Fatuma Gedi, they are on their way to winning. Let's wait and see.